Greetings from Accra, everyone, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all, wherever you may be. My name is Georgie Chikata. I'm based at the Institute of African Studies at the College of Humanities at the University of Ghana. And I'm really pleased to be your moderator for the 10th event in the dialogue series under the theme, Spectres of Crisis, Rays of Hope. The dialogue series are a fortnightly event and today's topic is the wretched of COVID-19 in Brazil, colonial spectres of an announced crisis. Our speaker today is Professor Davison Mendes Faustino, also known as Davison Nkosi. He's a professor at the Department of Health, Education and Society and the graduate program in social work and social policies at the Federal University of Sao Paulo. His research is focused on themes of racism and health, capitalism and racism, and anti-racist social thought. He's the author of several publications on these subjects, including Franz Fanon, A Revolutionary, Particularly Black, in 2018, to The Dispute Around Franz Fanon, The Theory and Politics of Contemporary Fanonisms in 2020, he is also co-editor of the Interfaces of Genocide in Brazil, Race, Gender, and Class in 2019. He will be ably supported by our discussant, Professor Paris Yeros, Professor at the Federal University of ABC in Sao Paulo in Brazil, and faculty member of the undergraduate programs in Economic Sciences and the Sciences and Humanities, and the postgraduate programs in World Political Economy and Human and Social Sciences. Paris is the editor of Agrarian South, Journal of Political Economy, and co-editor with Praveen Jha and Walter Chambati of the recently published book, Rethinking the Social Sciences with Samoyu. Before our speaker and discussant take the floor, I'd just like to make some brief remarks. You may recall that five of our dialogues so far have focused on the ravages of COVID-19 on the world economy and on working people of the global South. In these events, speakers such as Prabhat Patnaik, Michael Witta, Atiro Gien, Jayati Ghosh, Nancy Kachingwe, Nilanjana Mukia, Gabriela Mendes, and Achana Prasad have provided us with evidence, insights, and perspectives on COVID-19 from the scholarly traditions of radical political economy and feminism. Several of them highlighted the struggles of working people in general and women in particular for their very lives, for their livelihoods and dignity in these hard times. Today's focus on Brazil continues with our deliberations on COVID-19. Its point of departure is critically important. The focus this time is on the epidemiological indices of infection and mortality to COVID-19, as well as the Brazilian state's health responses. Brazil is among a small group of countries such as the United States of America, Tanzania and Belarus with hyper right-wing populist governments led by COVID-19 denialists. Secondly, the presentation will answer several critical questions, including why Brazil is so badly affected by COVID-19 in terms of infections and fatalities, and also why the most badly hit by COVID-19 is the Afro-Brazilian population. In doing this, the presentation will shed light on Brazil's particular branch of capitalism, which is underpinned by a history of slavery and colonization and neocolonialism. This focus on infection, mortality, and racialized capitalism is critical for understanding COVID-19 effects and responses globally, and also drawing lessons that are relevant beyond Brazil. In many countries outside Africa with significant black and brown populations, particularly in Europe and the Americas, the ravages of COVID-19 are being disproportionately experienced by these populations who tend to dominate the lower ranks of health and other kinds of care work, including domestic work, and therefore are on the front line, or who are in precarious work, who are poor, discriminated, marginalized, and faced with existential challenges arising from the long shadow cast by slavery and colonization. Brazil, which is home to the largest population of Africans outside Africa, is no different in this regard, and is perhaps the best laboratory for an analyzing the specificities of racialized capitalism, given its complicated history, 
both as a sub-imperialist power and land grabber in places like Africa, while also being a, um, a victim of its fair share of land grabbing by transnational corporations and the local elite. Brazil is a theater of the Lula revolution whose social policies such as Bolsa Familia and far-reaching affirmative action policies in higher education, health, and land restitution brought hopes of racial and class justice and galvanized workers, peasants, and women's movements and captivated the global South as a whole. Under the current Bolsonaro regime, Brazil has returned to its old ways of hyper neoliberal economics, massive repression, and populism. We are therefore extremely fortunate to have Davidson talk us through these gyrations in Brazilian politics and their implications for the pandemic. Today's session is occurring at a very special time, Black Consciousness Month in Brazil, the high point of which is November 20th. On this day in, in 1695, Zumbi of Palmares, leader of the resistance to slavery in colonial Brazil, was slain by the Portuguese colonial army, putting an end to a century of resistance by the Quilombo of Palmares, a settlement of Afro-Brazilian people in the northeast of Brazil, who had liberated themselves from enslavement. Before our speakers take the floor, followed by uh, the discussant, I'd like to acknowledge the partnerships that have anchored this dialogue series. The core partners are the Agrarian South Network, the Samoyo African Institute for Agrarian Studies in Zimbabwe, and Action Aid India. The supporting partners are the Center for Informal Sector and Labor Studies at JNU in India, the Institute of African Studies at the University of Ghana, Global University for Sustainability in Hong Kong, China, Postgraduate Program in World Political Economy and the Educational Technologies and Languages Unit at the Federal University of ABC in Brazil. Now, I would like to say a word about our question and answer section. It is particularly important to us that after the presentations have been made, we hear from you who are participating in, 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 in this webinar. Please send your written questions in Zoom and Facebook, and these will be posed to the speaker. The dialogue is in English. However, written questions can be in any other languages and they'll be translated and forwarded to the moderator, uh, to me, the moderator by the team. A recorded video will appear later with Portuguese and Spanish subtitles. And um, so I encourage you to, to um, be attentive and keep the questions coming once we, we open the floor. So without further ado, I'd like to ask Davison to take the floor for 40 minutes or so. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, Thank you, uh, uh, Professor Tiscata, for this great introducing. I am so happy for stay here uh, with you and Professor Parzieros in this important conference, important event. And well, I am not a fluent English speaker, so I will use PowerPoint to minimize any accent problem, uh, but uh, my, my presentation calls the record of COVID-19 in Brazil, colonial respect, respect of an um, announcement prize. Uh, and uh, let's start with this image. Uh, 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 this image is the perfect portrait of pandemic in Brazil. Uh, we, we, we have here a black man a uh, Brazilian black man in a precarious job, while a white man jogging during quarantine. Uh, this image is uh, emblematic uh, uh, to talk about the colonial aspect of uh, an announcement crisis of uh, pandemic in Brazil. Uh, this, my presentation will be divided in three, three parts. First, I will talk about the Brazilian response to pandemic and uh, comments also Bolsonaro's uh, response. Uh, 
but after I will I will talk about the colonial way of Brazilian capitalism and uh, the role of of racism in the current crisis. Well, um, uh, I will uh, I will begin uh, with David's Harvey quotation when he said that it's important to refuse uh, the idea of nature as outside of and separate from culture, economy, and daily life. There is, from this standpoint, no such thing as a truly natural disaster. Uh, viruses mutate all the time, but the circumstance in which a mutation become life-treatening depend on uh, human action. That quotation is important for us because Brazil uh, uh, is the second country most affected by COVID-19 in the world. Uh, but epidemiology is important here, but that, that area is not just a natural science uh, in Brazil, uh, but not, not only in Brazil, in the world. Uh, uh, it is the social condition that explain the epidemiological dynamics and explain in Brazilian case, why, why, why the death numbers skyrocket uh, in Manaus, for example. Manaus is the, the heart of the Amazonia. It was necessary to, uh, to open collective graves to bury the bodies because there are there was no space in the in the cemetery but other point uh, that is not is not much talked about in brazil is the was racialization of that uh, we can see here in this in this uh, in this chart in this graphic uh, 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 that, that is a, a kind of increase, uh, uh, sorry, that is a decrease in white people hospitalization between, between April and May, May. Uh, but, but uh, we, we have an increase for black people hospitalization in the same period. Uh, the same happy, happens with, with that numbers. Uh, we have a, a decrease uh, of of that uh, of of that of white people and uh, in, increase uh, with uh, in, in in black people uh, we we have that that data but the minister minister of health stopped offering data disaggregated by by race but uh, seeing that that information we can imagine the progress of this trend. Uh, 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 in the time. Well, uh, another problem when we, we, we see pandemic in Brazil is the evolution of the pandemic because we can observe a large increase in case of death between February and June, but we have not an uh, institutional and articulated response to, to that increase. And we will talk more about that, but after uh, we had a kind of, of plateau uh, uh, in between uh, between uh, May and and, and July, uh, and it, it, it's interesting because after when when the number of that decreased between August and October, that happened without an organized government intervention to stop the pandemic. That, that's, that's my point, because it was not... Uh, uh, oh, 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 uh, that's my point, because that's the, a, a kind of project, uh, a, a government project. Uh, today, uh, in, in Brazil, when we, say, we, we see the numbers, we, we talk about the, the second wave of coronavirus in Brazil, but we didn't even get over the first wave. Uh, it, it's funny to say uh, in second wave because we uh, uh, continue uh, 
in a pandemic problem. My, my key issue is how it is possible? How can a country protect it? Because we are protected by a universal and free health system. How, how can a country like Brazil be so affected by a pandemic as this? And uh, other question is uh, what explain the racialization of that? I, I want to talk with you about that. Uh, it's important uh, to talk about the uh, about uh, Bolsonaro government to understand Brazilian response. Uh, Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro began uh, his government in 2019 uh, and uh, it, it's it's so important to see that moment because uh, he was elected in 2018 after a par parliamentary coup that overthrew President Dilma Rousseff, uh, and his government uh, have been marked by the defense of democratic restriction and ca calling for return for dictatorship but also an ultra-liberal political platform that consists in a privatization of public assets, a dismantling of social security and labor rights, and a intensification of job insecurity and Uberiz uberization. Uh, it was, uh, 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 it, it is also, a kind of weakening of the public research structure. That is important because Bolsonaro's government is based uh, on at attacks on university considered leftists uh, and government planning uh, are based uh, usually in fake news or a kind of anti-scientificism or, and, and common sense belief. That is important because uh, 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 when the, uh, uh, this, this was the Brazilian political and social conjuncture when the coronavirus arrived in Brazil. And we, we, have, we had difficult to, to, uh, to, uh, to work with it because that is our scenario uh, uh, one uh, one uh, 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 or or on of the first case uh, is, sorry uh, our, our first case of of infection was a rich white man that was traveling in Italy uh, the in the first moment uh, the pandemic was majoritarily uh, 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 the, the rich people was the uh, was the, uh, were majoritarily affected by covid in the first moment but one of the first case of that was a, a, an elderly maid black woman uh, she worked in the home uh, of an infected rich family that is a, is a, a, a photography, a, a, a image of, of pandemic in Brazil because there are a, a unequal distribution of, of, uh, uh, of pandemic in Brazil. But when, when, when coronavirus arrived what, uh, uh, in, in Brazil, what's happened next was completely strange because uh, uh, bo, bo, our government was marked by a confused, uh, a confused response. Uh, in the first moment, Bolsonaro said uh, that coronavirus uh, was a little flu that, uh, that was being uh, overestimated and uh, we, didn't, we didn't need to, to do anything. But after when pandemic was so strong and was impossible to uh, uh, subestimate it, uh, uh, his posture was marked by a kind of ambiguity. Uh, while uh, the Minister of, of Health defended the quarantine uh, 
uh, our president took part in a public act without mask in the same moment, it's important to, to, to say that uh, that act, that street act wa uh, was for uh, a, a return of dictatorship. Uh, but that, that moment was, uh, was uh, important to understand our response because that ambiguity uh, was marked uh, uh, for a kind of polarization. Bolsonaro's created a, a polarization between uh, health and economy. That was, was so uh, problematic polar, polarization because uh, uh, puts Brazilian society to choose uh, which is better. Uh, he said, we cannot sacrif sacrifice the economy to guarantee quarantine uh, and he choose uh, economy, uh, but not health. Uh, that moment was marked also for a dispute between state and federal government because I am, I am uh, talking about uh, March and April, for example, when uh, state government began create some response to, to pandemic, some uh, kind of quarantine, local quarantine or local, uh, blo uh, 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 local interruption of circulation. But in that moment, uh, uh, Bolsonaro was against the, the, this initiative. Uh, and uh, we, we had a kind of, of fight between federal and state government. Uh, but after uh, we 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 have seen a kind of accommodation from above, because the fight between state and federal government is stopped, and uh, and both uh, create a kind of agreement uh, for uh, economy. If Bolsonaro created. Uh, that polar polarization between health and economy, uh, our bourgeoisie, our government choose economy against health, uh, and uh, uh, both uh, 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 stopped uh, a force, public efforts to to uh, to minimize circulation, uh, social circulation. It, that, that, that was so uh, problematic for for population, for worker, and etc. Uh, that that period was marked by a full opening and uh, full opening of economy activity. Uh, if if you we have not an institutional uh, way, institutional efforts to stop it circulation, uh, security, misery have become an individual responsibility. But uh, whole poor people from favela, from people that, that work in a precarious job can uh, uh, guarantee his uh, epidemiological security when uh, uh, government uh, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't offer social conditions for that. That's the question for us. That maybe explain our numbers of, uh, uh, of pandemic. Of, uh, of pandemic. Uh, and, but uh, who, who, who analyze this scenario? I think there are different line, uh, different interpretative line. Uh, First, it's important to, 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 to say about it, there are a uh, ultra-liberal line that guide gov governmental efforts, uh, and they uh, just now uh, continue creating uh, efforts to contain the, the, not contain pandemic, but contain uh, uh, a force to contain pandemic, you know, uh, the, 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 the ultra liberal interpretation create the idea that, that uh, 
uh, uh, that quarantine, for example, uh, is the problem, is an economic problem, and we, we need to stop with it to uh, uh, improving our economy. Uh, uh, the, the idea is that a force to contain the pandemic generated an economic crisis. That is a, a government line interpretation, but the, there are so much intellectuals uh, in, uh, in Brazilian bourgeoisie, in, in uh, communications media that, that uh, agree with that, that line. There is other interpretative line uh, that I that I, I want I want to to talk about I I, I call it like uh, 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 as liberal and democratic left left uh, they they call uh, in uh, administrative incompetence of Bolsonaro to uh, stop the pandemic in Brazil or they uh, some intellectuals. Uh, uh, talk about rise of new fascism. Uh, that's two points uh, are, are, are so important, but uh, I, I think uh, that there are others important points uh, that we need to see to understand our conjuncture. And I, I agree with the Marxist left intellectuals uh, when they call uh, that our scenario can be understood uh, in the context of national effect of the structural crisis of capital. I, I, I agree with them, but my, my argument is, uh, is that current conjuncture can, uh, is that current conjuncture can be better understood also, thinking also, uh, take into uh, the colonial roots of capitalism, of Brazilian capitalism, and the rule of racism in in the reproduction of Brazilian capital. I will I will talk more about about that uh, because uh, we uh, I, I would like to talk about uh, the combination of three aspects to understand. Brazilian capitalism and current conjuncture, because uh, there are a great debate, debate uh, about the particularity of Brazilian capitalism. And, but I, I think uh, uh, the, uh, the Chazin's, José Chazin's approach is so import important to understand our particularity uh, when he said, that our capitalism is a colonial capitalism. He's, he, he talks about the colonial way of Brazilian capitalist gentrification. And, and that is in, that's so important to understand Brazil because our capitalism was born from colonialism. That is important because that creates particularity to, uh, to understand uh, uh, our history, but also are, are present uh, uh, and uh, we we was born from colonialism and slavery and uh, originary people genocide uh, that create a, a, a particularity for our uh, capitalism. Uh, but the result uh, was a society marked by uh, over exploitation of the workforce, marked by a fragility of democratic institu institutions. Uh, it's important just to, to talk about it because we, our history after the slavery was an alternation between restricted democracy and dictatorship. Uh, we, we had uh, uh, alternation between them, uh, but, uh, uh, our, our capitalism was marked also by a high concentration of income and inequality. Uh, it's important to, to talk about it because important intellectuals that uh, talk about that particularity don't talk about racism, but racism, racism 
here was an important social bar barrier and, and an instru instrument of unequal uh, poverty distribution. Uh, uh, racism was important in the slavery system, but continued being important after that uh, whole, uh, uh, as a, 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 a part of, of that, part, that capitalist particularity. And, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the left intellectuals, the most, the, uh, the majority of less intellectuals in Brazil don't, don't talk about racism. That, that is a problem. But uh, the first problem that I, I, I want to talk is that uh, our capitalism uh, is a particular way of capitalism uh, structured by a colonial way of identification. And it is important because uh, the that period, uh, the period of consolidation of this colonial Brazilian capitalism, indeed, ended with the mundialization of capital, uh, and we, we uh, the the last decades, uh, we 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 are in the in the other stage of that that uh, uh, that particularity. Uh, and the, that moment was marked by a subordinate insertion of Brazilian capitalism into the global, globalization, I, I prefer to say mundialization, of, of capital. I, 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 I base my, my point of view in, in Steve Mesaros and uh, Goretz Sobrin, uh, because I, 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 I want to think that uh, uh, we, we had uh, a colonial capitalist marked by over-exploitation of workforce, but when uh, uh, we uh, go inside the, the, the structural crisis of capital market, uh, uh, marked by uh, mundialization, that particularity creates uh, particular problems for, for us. Or, or create a kind of intensification of results of structural crisis of capital. Uh, 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 Goretti Sobrinho said that our insertion uh, in the glo globalization of capital was a subordinate manner. Uh, and it's deepened, deepened the effect of structural crisis of capital. Uh, uh, based uh, on dismantling social and labor rights. And we had in the last, the last period, we, we, we have some uh, labor rights, so some, some social rights conquisted by a strong fight in the last decades. But uh, this moment represented a dismantling of these social and labor rights but also an uh, increase of precarious work and income concentration. And, and here, again, uh, in this uh, current moment, again, racism is a fundamental element that defines uh, who can or cannot assess uh, uh, social, uh, social uh, 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 assess wishes, uh, but assesses also health. That's important because uh, that's uh, uh, helping us understand this scenario, uh, the Brazilian scenario when coronavirus arrived because we had a combination of factors, a combination of, of, of a, 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 a combination where a rich country, but in equal country, based by over-exploitation and exclusion uh, of uh, uh, which part, a uh, uh, big part of, of his, uh, of their population uh, in the context of precariz precarization of work and, and attacks uh, against, uh, uh, against rights conquisted in the last decades, but also racism creates inequal access uh, to health because uh, health uh, is not only a, a biological biological issue. Health depends 
of social condition and racism created in Brazil, uh, a different access to health condition. Uh, that's the point to understand the racialization of death uh, by COVID-19, for example. Uh, I think racism, uh, racism uh, in Brazil uh, is important to understand the current economic crisis because uh, first, of, first of all, racism naturalize social inequality, blame the victims. Uh, and when we blame the victims, we cannot, uh, we, we cannot problematize or, or fix it, the real social problem. Uh, and racism uh, said today that uh, 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 poverty is uh, a, a blame of black people because black people uh, are not, uh, uh, black people don't, don't fight for, for, for themselves. For example, we can listen to it. Black people is the, in Brazil uh, uh, are the majority of population, but black people are in the worst space. In the, in, uh, black people living in the uh, uh, precarious condition in Brazil. Uh, and racism naturalized uh, racial inequality. Uh, in, in, the, in that that uh, in that cause for this conference, we we say race is, race is important, but I think uh, 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 maybe race are not so important. But before race, racism is important to understand how the idea of race creates difference. Uh, of condition of life in Brazil, but racism naturalizes social inequality. Uh, racism uh, offers unequal living living con living condition uh, uh, and influence If you you think health, for example, influence being born, uh, growing up, getting sick and dying. Uh, we we have some uh, researchers researcher showing who racism influences uh, health conditions and possibility of, of death. Uh, but uh, racism influences also the access to healthcare services and healthcare equipments, healthcare public equipments. There are differences of access for black and, and white people in Brazil. And uh, that's, that's uh, that topics are important to understand why black people in Brazil uh, uh, has more death by cancer or chronic kidney disease or chronic obesity pulmonary disease. Uh, black people are most affected by health condition, heart condition or cardiomyopathy uh, or obesity or type two diabetes Melitus, uh, uh, that that are diseases uh, that uh, increase the risk for death uh, from uh, from COVID nineteen. Uh, it's important to understand the social condition to understand to to uh, uh, to, to talk about the the pandemic in, in Brazil, but. Uh, the social conditions are marked by racism in our uh, unequal society. That's the point uh, that, that I want to, to talk about. Uh, but racism uh, creates also a kind of indifference to social inequality, uh, indifference uh, about black lives, indifference about, uh, about suffering created by combination between capitalism and, and racism. Uh, I, I, I wrote Black Lives here because uh, uh, we, we today, we, we have more of uh, 106,000 deaths by COVID-19, uh, but we thought commotion. Uh, I think uh, 
uh, it's important to talk about this because uh, Bra Brazil has the most violent and lethal policy in the world. Uh, eight out of 10 young people murdered in Brazil are black. It's, it's happened before uh, pandemic. Uh, 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 but Brazilian society was only touched by the 10 due to the mobilization on behalf of George Floyd's murder. We, we only uh, start, started uh, talking about it uh, when the problem was visible in US. Uh, racism creates uh, the indifference and indifference allows in uh, uh, our numbers of death uh, and uh, indifference uh, is the impossibility of commotion with that 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 death. Uh, I think racism uh, is important to to speak about new fascism, but I think racism is the key for an even distribution of the national na national effect of our subordination insertion in the structural crisis of capital. Bolsonaro is just the most recent and visible expression of an ancient black and indigenous genocide process. It's an important expression, but the problem in Brazil don't begin, didn't begin with Bolsonaro. That's important to, to speak. Uh, well, uh, uh, against this scenario, we need to talk about race of rope because it's the, 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 our, our subject. I think the rays of hope are the possibility of combination of a struggle that is both anti-racist struggle, anti-neocolonial struggle, and anti-capitalist struggle. Uh, we thought that combination, we can, uh, we, we, we probably will continue in this scenario even when Bolsonaro uh, go, go, go home, uh, uh, our, our challenge is think whole to, uh, to whole, whole to think together that uh, that's a approach to to building a new society and a new uh, a new hope. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Davison, for that really interesting intervention. I'd now like to ask uh, Professor Paris Yeros to make his comments. Thank you. Thank you, Georgie. Thank you, Davison, for this uh, illuminating talk. Um, I will uh, just take a few minutes to uh, add some thoughts and uh, uh, make uh, uh, try to provoke you a bit more uh, as to especially the rays of hope that you that you mentioned at the end. Um, you started uh, by noting that Brazil has a universal healthcare system. Um, this uh, is important to note. Uh, because uh, it was uh, the result of a, a new constitution in uh, 1988, which brought in um, a whole series of rights, a, a very modern uh, constitution. Um, in, in fact, it was the first constitution that guaranteed uh, universal suffrage. Before that, uh, Brazil, even uh, the, the constitution had been suspended by the military regime, even that constitution um, uh, precluded um, uh, universal suffrage. It was a qualified vote for uh, the literate. Yeah? So it is a type, it really, uh, Brazil in 1988 makes a transition uh, that is very similar in my view. Uh, and I say this for our colleagues and the, in the, um, uh, friends who are following uh, this uh, event. It was very similar to uh, what happened in South Africa. Uh, it is a type of uh, um, 
uh, in a strict sense, a type of decolonization yeah, of an internal type of colonialism, yeah, which was a very, um, um, which precluded any type of uh, uh, serious uh, sustained uh, um, uh, challenge to the, a colonial you know, myth, a colonial order uh, of segregation. Yeah? So from 1988, the constitution brings in universal suffrage, brings in a universal health system, uh, all kinds of rights uh, for uh, demarcation of the birth, demarcation of the Quilombola lands for um, uh, a series of policies for land reform and so forth. Um, so that is the starting point. Nonetheless, yeah, uh, as you also mentioned, the, it, it was a moment um, of political opening, yeah, at the same time as the economy was resubordinated to a new neoliberal uh, framework, economic framework. So the contradiction was given. Yeah? The contradiction was only going to get worse. And the, the chasm between the reality yeah, and, the, and, the, and the constitution uh, was, was going to be uh, 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 very clear and it was only going to widen. So in fact, uh, in the 2000s, uh, you mentioned the, 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 the violence uh, during, precisely during the Lula years, which uh, uh, the social policy side reached its uh, apex. There was also the, 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 the killing also uh, reached its apex. In fact, it jumped uh, to levels that were um, comparable to any war situation in the world. From 2003 through the new uh, anti-drug policy, the war on drugs, we had a, a type of scenario where uh, violent deaths started jumping to 50,000, 60,000 per year and being sustained over from over a decade uh, to, if you count it all in, to 700, 800,000, almost a million people dead in, in uh, 50, 10, 15 years. This is comparable a violent deaths we're talking. This is comparable to any war, you know, at, this same, at that time we would, the, the, the war in Iraq was ongoing. Um, the, 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 the death toll in Iraq, there's various counts, but uh, around a half a million people died in, in that decade. And this is, uh, Brazil uh, was above that. Yeah. So it was really, that's the type of contradiction that needs to be, uh, um, you know, brought into light when we talk about you know how uh, the fascist uh, uh, state uh, has returned now in 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 a, in a, in a much fuller way uh, in the midst of a a a, a, a pandemic. Uh, this justifies the the the, term, the use of the term genocide. This is it never ended and it has escalated now in a, in a, in a so-called democratic conditions. Um, so that's the the one. The one issue that I think needs to be very clear, you know, there has been a, a very uh, deepening chasm between the law and the reality, the constitution and the reality on the ground, uh, as far as the, the Brazilian political process is, is concerned. Um, the, and the, other, the other issue, I think that I, I, I just want to frame, um, just to go a bit just beyond Brazil, yeah, so we, uh, maybe bring into focus uh, tendencies that are ongoing in the region. Um, there also has been a certain type of interpretation which um, uh, uh, sees a, a type of left uh, turn uh, for in the 2000s, yeah? uh, which uh, somehow has come to an end, let's say. You know, that's the interpretation. It was a cycle uh, of, of of uh, left uh, governments, left movements, uh, a, a left tide, yeah? Um, this is true, of course. Um, uh, and uh, this is the, the, the backdrop, let's say, to the pandemic, you know, before the pandemic struck. But at the same time, um, it is the, what this, uh, the chasm, the, the contradictions that Brazil has had have also repeated themselves in everywhere, everywhere else. In fact, at the same time as the, the left uh, gained uh, force in, in Latin America, the coups, the coup d'etats also escalated. 
throughout this period, there has been coups uh, systematically, you know, starting with uh, Haiti at the turn of the century, then uh, uh, attempted coups and coups that were successful in, to, in, in their objectives. So Haiti, uh, Bolivia, Venezuela, uh, there they were, they were not uh, uh, successful. Uh, then there was Honduras, Paraguay, yeah, um, all the way back to you know Brazil. Yeah, uh, there, so there's a series of uh, of coups that have been that have been of this last twenty years. Yeah, um, so the contradictions have been there the whole time. Yeah, and the the, the process is ongoing. So that's one of the you know this explains not only Brazil but also Peru has had a very serious pandemic. Uh, Central America has been struck very severely by the pandemic. Um, so, you know, it's not the, uh, it, it is, uh, it seems like the Americas as a whole has been, has been, is, is, is a, has been struck uh, very severely, with the exception of Cuba. And, you know, um, of course, uh, the cases that uh, were more successful in, in many ways in, in tackling this pandemic. Um, and in all cases, yeah, it's a race question, in fact, yeah, from the U.S. until, you know, the Southern Cone, uh, this is the new world, and, and after talking about the Americas, uh, uh, where uh, uh, the original sin of uh, the modern world uh, uh, occurred, the, the great genocides of the last 500 years, and which are questions which have never been resolved, yeah, and, and are uh, continue to uh, structure all these societies uh, up to the present. Yeah, democracy is not is is a very recent phenomenon, and it's been a, a highly contradictory and violent phenomenon yeah? in all these in all these uh, uh, cases. Um, the other uh, one more issue that I, I I want to bring out is the type of um, social structure. Uh, uh, that has evolved uh, the 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 this, uh, structure. Uh, the so that the, the the labor market has also become um, has its own particularities. Uh, of course, there's similarities to the rest of the world, the, the South at least. Um, about the sense that uh, labor work is is uh, has a very uh, um, unstable relationship uh, with uh, salaried uh, labor, you know, with uh, with a uh, uh, permanent labor. There's a very difficult uh, relationship, episodic, periodic, informal relationship with uh, salaries uh, in this labor market. Uh, own account, informal, autonomous type of labor uh, predominates. Uh, um, and uh, in the pandemic, uh, this has worsened uh, very severely. Um, uh, some data that came out uh, just uh, today from research uh, done at the University of Campinas uh, has shown that the delivery services, which have become so essential during the lockdown and the, uh, the pandemic, um, have uh, uh, brought in, have inaugurated a new, uh, inaugurated, just deepened the situation whereby 40% uh, of those that work in delivery service now work hours a day. Yeah. And also uh, all across the board, incomes in this have, have dropped. We're back to a type of, uh, you know, a situation where uh, labor laws, those those uh, victories that were uh, realized in the past have have become, uh, you know, uh, meaningless uh, uh, when we look at the realities of how these uh, the labor situation has evolved. Um, now, the last. Uh, so I think that's just one of the mentioned that uh, uh, also explains the, uh, the 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 way 
the, the, the virus, the pandemic has evolved because there is a population, a large part of the working class that lives in very precarious conditions, um, cannot stay at home during a lockdown. Yeah? It's impossible to, to uh, make ends meet to survive under these conditions. Um, and this is precisely the, the, the population which um, has been, which you've been talking about uh, within the race uh, structure of, of Brazil. The final point, and I think this is the, the question that you, you can respond to anything that I have said, of course, but uh, a specific question, you spoke about the rays of hope. There is uh, a, 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 a resurgence of uh, uh, a black movement, a unified black movement in Brazil, uh, which uh, uh, came together, in fact, before the pandemic, yeah, in the, um, when uh, just a year before the pandemic, when uh, over 100 uh, movements, black movements in Brazil came together into a coalition. Yeah. Um, and this has um, given a new life to a critique of Brazilian society and inter in, in constant intervention in the public debate yeah. um, with a, a new capacity to articulate a, a national question. Yeah. Uh, whereas other social movements in the country may be rural or urban. Some uh, are, have um, an ideology of um, focused on food uh, sovereignty, uh, others on uh, urban housing for the urban homeless. Um, uh, but in the case of uh, the, black, the new unified uh, coalition of, of black movements, uh, we, we see that this, has, this coalition has been able to articulate a full range of issues that are applicable to urban uh, situations, rural situations uh, related to health, education, um, uh, women's rights, uh, uh, LGBT rights, uh, the whole uh, spectrum. Uh, it seems to me that um, the, the, the new black movement is, is almost like a, a, a political party. Of course, it doesn't have uh, that kind of structure, uh, but in the sense that it has a, f a vision of the whole uh, national question, which other social movements normally do not have. Uh, so I think maybe we, I just throw that out as a question, uh, just to, or a comment to, to which uh, respond um, uh, anyway, of course, any, any other comments I've made, you may also either respond or, 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 or ignore. Um, I think I will just end there and let our colleagues also jump in uh, uh, to make their own uh, contributions. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Paris. I think I'd like to ask Davison if he would respond to your, your comments before we open the floor for um, other comments. Okay. Thank you, Parzieros. Uh, uh, our important issues to, to, to talk. Well, well uh, I, 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 I will start uh, talking about the universal health system because it, it was created in the context of, of the constitution, the new constitution we, we was ending a dictator period. And in that moment, uh, uh, the, the, there was a, a social pact. Call, uh, some intellectuals calls, in, uh, uh, calls about new republic. Uh, and, and that pact, that social pact was marked by an advance of social struggle because the, there was a uh, a rising of social movement in, in that moment and constitution or constitution uh, 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 was marked by incorporation of popular, some popular demands. Uh, uh, I agree that that process is, is similar uh, 
what's happening in South Africa, but uh, 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 the, the pact did not break with the colonial past. That is the point to understand today uh, uh, the current scenario because that incorporation of social demands uh, was not uh, was not part of a radical break of uh, uh, colonial past and colonial force and uh, 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 a big uh, 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 bourgeoisie, Brazilian bourgeoisie, for example, uh, and the, the, that that pact uh, uh, for uh, because these that create limits for this uh, for this this process. Uh, the Lula government, for me, has been marked for uh, was marked for for this contradiction because in one hand we. We had an uh, increase in the cons cons uh, in the consumerism of the poor people, for example, in the the, the word class, uh, and uh, but also on the other hand, we had an increase, a big uh, increase in the uh, in the uh, what can I say, uh, 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 increasing in the in the riches uh, uh, of of big rich people. Uh, but but was a moment do the government was a moment of real incorporation of popular demands from uh, black movement feminist movement uh, uh, worker uh, uh, and worker class demands for uh, labor rights that that's that is is right but uh, also uh, the pact the social pact with or industrial and financial bourgeoisie creates difficult to real uh, attend of these demands uh, and uh, the, 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 the and the power uh, keep in the same hands uh, uh, and uh, same hands that was in the dictator period we didn't dismantling dictatorial uh, institution, uh, military institution, military policy, and uh, 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 and uh, concert, land concentration, uh, etc. Uh, but we had a real uh, uh, in, in, uh, a real increase of of uh, uh, attendance of some social demands was a, a contradiction. Uh, 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 a contradictory period, uh, but I think uh, that's important to understand how uh, uh, Lula and Dilma government was discarded by our bourgeoisie when this pact was not interesting for them because uh, uh, they uh, 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 that that moment was possible because th there was international condition for that in the international. Uh, market, but uh, when this this pact, this project was not interesting for our bourgeoisie, uh, 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 that that project was just dis, uh, discarded by uh, 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 parliamentary coup. Uh, I think it's, it's important because uh, the the uh, we had important. Uh, uh, Important, important gains for worker class in this period, but that gains uh, uh, will not deep sufficiently to continue after the end of Lula and Dilma period. That is important for me. And it's important to understand that moment also because, uh, and for that I, I, I am calling for uh, uh, Colonial way that, that calling for importance to understand our colonial way because we 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 have not uh, uh, finished uh, it it roots uh, uh, is is it, really uh, capitalism was was marked uh, world capitalism was marked by an uneven and com combined developed uh, and. Uh, uh, Periphery and capitalism in periphery was structured uh, by uh, 
over exploitation and in our case or colonial case our capitalism by was structured by indigenous uh, genocide and black slavery uh, and uh, that create a, a, a particular kind of capitalism uh, uh, marked by a fragile uh, fragile democracy. Florestan Fernandes spoke of interrupted decolonization. It's interesting because our decolonization began in the uh, 19th uh, century, uh, uh, in, uh, in, but uh, our process of decolonization was interrupted uh, by uh, 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 our, uh, 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 our how can I say, uh, our, our, our decolonization were interrupted and our, our uh, dominant class choose the way of subordination of international capital, but the, the, uh, that was uh, structured by over exploitation and uh, over exploitation uh, can be uh, continued with a fragile democracy and uh, uh, institutional violence uh, that, that's mark a kind of state and, and a kind of uh, uh, political institutionality. Uh, our institutionality are marked by violence and naturalization of, of vi violence. I think uh, uh, this is important to understand our achievement and also our failures uh, uh, because, for example, Universal system of health is a great example because we call in Brazil SUS, Sistema Único de Saúde, uh, Unical System of Health. Uh, our system are uh, is universal and 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 free, uh, and we we uh, uh, the, uh, our definition of health is a definition uh, the, the, uh, of health like. Uh, uh, a right, a universal right. That's that was an import, important, uh, an important thing. But uh, that, that uh, our system was marked uh, after uh, constitution in eighteen uh, in eighteen eighteen. Uh, or uh, we we had color government and the the shoes the government shoes for new liberalism. And that creates the impossibility to put uh, unico, uh, to put our uh, healthy system of uh, uh, in, in uh, to practice the the the, the principles of health system uh, and and create difficult to guarantee the uh, the gains uh, the social gains pres present in in constitution. Uh, uh, especially in, in health, and today we, we, we have an important health system. Uh, I think uh, for us in Brazil, the rays of hope uh, uh, pass for, for uh, defend uh, our health system. It's an important task for our left force defend health system because it is an important uh, important uh, uh, part of, of, of our fight, of, of work, labor, uh, 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 our labor class, uh, work class. But uh, uh, SUS, uh, Sistema, uh, Universal System of Health has real difficult to guarantee, to, uh, to practice uh, its principle because uh, uh, there are uh, economic limits created by uh, economic shoes in, in, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for our government. Uh, that explains, for example, the context of dissemination of pandemic because uh, it, it's interesting because I think if we didn't have a universal system of health, our numbers will be uh, 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 so so big. Uh, it, it will be uh, more than 
United States, for example, I think uh, our universal system of health was the big wall to pandemic. But the, the project of our government was dismantling our universal health system to create condition to pri private, private uh, 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 market of, of health. Uh, but he, he, he could not uh, do that. Uh, I think if we can talk about incompetence of this government was to, to put in, in order his project of dismantling because uh, we are in this process, but there are a resistance force to protect uh, uh, that, uh, that, that history, that possibility to, to cover uh, uh, our population, and but uh, to to think a, a race of growth for me uh, 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 is important to consider it, uh, uh, our our gains, our our social gains, and uh, cons consider it uh, uh, the for example that today there is an important insurgence of the black movement in Brazil. It is important to talk about uh, and that there is a growing of uh, a, a growing sensitivity to the theme of racism among leftist party and among people in, in general. Uh, and in the last election here last week, uh, we, we, we had an increase in the numbers of black local parliamentarians. But uh, I still sorry about some points uh, because uh, the historical refusal of the Marxist left to address racism forced black movements to organize himself separately. And the result uh, is, uh, it is a black movement that does not think about class. That's a problem because Black people in Brazil are majoritarily, majoritarily working class, but black movement uh, uh, don't think uh, in class terms. That's the first problem. But the other problem is uh, a kind of, uh, of uh, class movement or Marxist movement that does not consider it, uh, the centrality of racism to understand the the economic uh, economic framework in Brazil, uh, I think the the race of rope uh, uh, is in the possibility to fix it to to create other framework where we can uh, articulate this uh, efforts to 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 build to building another society. Thank you very much for um, that focus on, on the issue of the race of hope, particularly your, your atten the attention you drew to the universal health system and, and the fact that that was the war between Brazil and absolute di uh, disaster, but also the new stirrings of the black movement. And most importantly, um, the point about um, the fact that this movement does not pay sufficient attention to class uh, questions, and also that um, the Marxist organizations do not pay sufficient attention to race. And therefore, this being a very important um, aspect of what to do going forward in order to see more robust uh, movements against the, 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 the counter revolution. At this juncture, I'd like to call Lenosome and then Pravinja to, to put some, some, some questions that they have. Thank you. Lane first, please. Okay. Thank you, Georgie. And thank you, uh, Davison, for your, for your talk. Um, so I have um, you know, two questions. One is you spoke of um, a gradual accommodation from above uh, in the COVID response. So could you speak more about the conditions and the, the kinds of negotiations and the kinds of considerations that you think led to this kind of 
accommodation. That is one. And two, so this, this is you know, a bit maybe polemical, but do you think that given the character of, of, of uh, Bolsonaro's regime, that a non-racist response would have been possible or expected? So in a sense, what are the demands of the black uh, movements that are emerging? What kinds of demands uh, do you think the, the regime could have been expected to respond to, um, you know, within this time? I, and also just a comment on your, you know, your last point about these, these new movements not having, not articulating a class, a class critique. I mean, I hear this a lot and, and th there's always a temptation to call them, to just dismiss them as identitarian. But I think that part of it is, you know, as, you know when you think of Isa Shibji's notion, you know, and others notion of working people, you know, the notion that has been floating around a lot of the precariat. I mean, they, they, maybe the existing paradigms do not articulate uh, you know, because these people are poor, they have no doubt that, you know, they are poor and they're working class and, and all that kind of thing. So, I mean, are there other ways to understand what they're articulating? Because as you very well said, you know, they're, they're stuck in these historical and structural inequality, cycles of inequality, whether it's health or education, you know, without just saying, okay, these, these guys are not talking about class in, in, in the sort of um, historical way in which we understand it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Lynn. And then Praveen, please, before we ask uh, Davison to take the floor again. Thank you, Sister Jaji. Uh, Davison, that was uh, a very, very illuminating in terms of many issues. And uh, uh, congratulations to you for this talk, raising extremely important concerns and so on. Uh, a few thoughts for uh, your further reflections. Uh, number one, you know, you talked of the Constitution and the universal health. Uh, uh, kind of, in a sense, promise, yeah, in the 1988 constitution and so on. As it happens, we have seen this in many countries around the world, yeah. That is, constitution guarantees something. In practice, there is massive violation of that, or very differential kind of implementation of that. So, you know, constitution itself is hardly a kind of uh, insurance that what is said will certainly be done. Yeah. I mean, Indian constitution is supposed to be one of the best in the world. Right. I'm saying this not because I'm an Indian, but, you know, there's generally a lot of appreciation for our constitution. Article 39B, it says that every person will have adequate resources for a life of dignity. I mean, you know, it's a fantastic kind of provision. Jilt, nothing happens, right? You know, huge majority of the population is just left for the devil to devour them, right? So, you know, this whole uh, kind of accent on the institution uh, which can ensure what, or institutional processes which can ensure what the constitution had promised and so on. That includes politics, that includes a whole range of movements and so on and so forth. If you would like to say a little more on that, you know, let's say the decade of uh, that last century after 1988, for a while, right? Uh, the Lula period, how apparently 
presumably there was some improvement in some of those aspects. What were the factors driving those? You know, sort of, uh, as we know very well that Lula could not uh, break out of uh, a kind of neoliberal mode. He could not really challenge the corporate power. However, within that, through a range of sort of uh, uh, possibilities that he created, essentially backed by greater mobilization of resources, large part of which came from direct taxation. You know, tax GDP ratio goes up. I think this was astounding, unprecedented, by something like 10 to 12 percent, right, over a period of roughly, uh, you know, a decade or so. And through that, he certainly, it seems, that regime certainly kind of uh, uh, implement a little more in terms of whether it was uh, issues relating to health, whether it is issue, issues relating to food security and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, you know it better than I do, right? So if you could, for us, for all of us who do not know Brazil so well, could reflect on some of these in terms of how a set of synergies or the absence of that possibly facilitated achievement of, or the lack of achievement during the period since 1988, that would be uh, certainly uh, valuable for, 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 for us. True, I mean, it is, it is indeed the case that anywhere in the world, what a national regime can do is very sort of severely hampered by its insertion into the broader neoliberal kind of framework, right? But that keeps changing. You know, Paris talked about uh, what I call uh, the axis of the good against the axis of the evil. And by axis of the evil, I mean the US and so on and so forth. And there was, you know, so in uh, uh, Latin America, you had for a while, uh, sort of coming together of progressive forces. And that to me was, you know, polemically speaking, the axis of the good, right? Now, what brought it, what its weakening? Some of those, uh, again, connect. So, you know, instead of thinking in terms of, let's say neoliberalism versus sort of a, a kind of structural racism and so on, but there is a, dynamic interaction between the two. And if you would like to talk a little more about that. Um, you know, the third uh, issue, uh, sometimes I feel that, um, uh, you know, uh, sort of straw person of the so-called Marxism or Marxist gets created. So when you uh, sort of use a blanket expression called the Marxist left, right? Now that, to my mind, possibly is not a good way of going about it. I imagine you are a Marxist. Uh, I imagine Paris is a Marxist. <laughs> and many, uh, many of us, including the chair of this session, uh, you know, sort of yours truly, uh, all of us in different ways, uh, certainly subscribe to the Marxist uh, 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 method, and within that, then we have lots of, uh, uh, you know, differences as well, and so on. So I, I, I guess, um, you know, um, uh, possibly a more <laughs> nuanced way of uh, treating, uh, I guess, the Marxist left in uh, Brazil uh, may be desirable instead of uh, just putting them in some pigeonhole and uh, thinking of uh, uh, that as a kind of, uh, let's say a separate box compared to those who are uh, talking about, um, uh, or, uh, or, or, or rather kind of uh, emphasizing the centrality of the race factor and so on. I guess there are again, lots of uh, 
combinations there and uh, in terms of approaches and so on. And the very last point, um, which is a raise of hope that uh, uh, is, is uh, something you flagged and then Paris talked about and so on. What kind of, you know, uh, forces and combinations which uh, you see on the ground, not in terms of simply the desirability of it, right? You talked about uh, uh, some electoral outcomes very recently, which uh, gives us maybe a little bit of uh, optimism, but on the ground, what are the kind of uh, processes and forces and so on? Because that really is a huge question everywhere in the world, right? Uh, how sort of incessant and infinite strategies of uh, divide and rule, okay? So for instance, in Florida, uh, apparently sort of, uh, you know, majority of Latinos back Trump. Now, doesn't make sense, right? Uh, and likewise, you know, if you look at st state by state and so on, all kinds of very interesting stats are coming. So what you would associate with, let's say, certain kinds of social groups, it does not happen automatically, right? Uh, So-called working people, you know, overwhelming majority of working people in India are backing a fascist regime, right? Now it's utterly troubling, you know, why does that happen? But you can understand it. Once you understand that it is because of a certain kind of fascist ideology, Hindutva uh, is something which is at the center of it, right? And how that kind of uh, others, a significant social group, right? So, you know, that then ensures coming together even of those on the margin, those who are, uh, those who should be talking in a different uh, language, thinking differently and so on. So, you know, many of these issues, so in the context of Brazil, if you would like to flag some of these things, uh, I guess that would be uh, sort of uh, pretty enlightening in terms of thinking about rays of hope. So sister, I should stop here, no? Otherwise I'll probably take Indeed. too much time. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Thank, <laughs> but thank you. you so much for, for, okay. for those important questions. And yeah. Davison, before you speak, I'd like to draw your attention to some interesting questions in the chat. So Vanessa Pfeiffer Kolu is asking, Prof. Davison, do you think those rays of hope could be as well empowered by taking in by taking seriously the ideas of some Brazilian black women intellectuals, such as Lelia Gonzalez or Sueli Canero in the approach on structural racism by the Brazilian academics. In the same way, considering and learning by the long trajectory of resistance that black and indigenous people have been mobilizing long time and provide strategies as well for the COVID issue. So that's one. Gabriela Chavez says, how do you evaluate the emergency policies of this crisis? So now you have a lot on your plate. So you have the floor now, thank you. Thank you for, for that uh, topics and, and questions and issue. Uh, I, 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 I talk about uh, gradual accommodation of above uh, for problematizing, uh, problematize the, the Brazilian response because in the, in the second moment, in the first moment, th there was a, a, a ignorance of, of, of government uh, about coronavirus, but when it was impossible to ignorate it, ignorate the pandemic, the response was uh, based uh, by a kind of ambiguity and, and fighting uh, between go statewide government and federal government. Uh, and the fighting was 
I was fighting for uh, uh, for blackout for for blackout no sorry for uh, for quarantine for social uh, uh, response for uh, nine COVID nineteen, but uh, the the polarization created by Bolsonaro won the fight because he created the, the not only he but he was part of that uh, line of view where exists uh, the the polarization between health and economy and, and they choose economy and uh, I think that argument was important to create a, a kind of accommodation uh, of uh, uh, accommodation of above because uh, in the third moment, uh, even that that local government that, that defended uh, uh, quarantine uh, uh, flexibilized it and it stopped uh, a massive efforts to to limit uh, social circulation, for example, and it creates a kind of consensus between them uh, in, in terms of, of idea of centrality to economy. Uh, that is, is, is so problematic point of view because we need to be live uh, uh, to, to produce, to uh, improve the economy, but that, that shows uh, uh, was so dramatic for poor people because without governmental governmental uh, efforts to to uh, to stop circulation uh, people need needs uh, uh, do that alone uh, but a, a, a worker class cannot say for for uh, them then entrepreneur then uh, then shift that uh, I will not go to the work today because there are coronavirus. Uh, uh, that that was so dramatic for working class because who can stay at home, uh, 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 protecting himself uh, about coronavirus? Uh, is the rich people is is a, 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 a part of of Brazilian population? The most of of part of population needs to be uh, in uh, a full collect collective transport uh, 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 need to be in risk uh, of infection and risk of death because uh, even when the 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 numbers of infection were most frequently frequent in a rich class. Uh, was the poor people uh, and black people, people that more, uh, people that 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 die more with with coronavirus, and but but that debate uh, cannot exist. There was the idea that uh, pandemic was a democratic problem. Uh, 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 everyone can be. Uh, affected by it, but th that's not not really that is lie because uh, uh, the virus, the SARS-CoV-2, uh, uh, can't can't see cannot see uh, race and class and gender, but the social conditions to SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, to disseminate are social so, so, uh, are social uh, are, are social and that create different condition to infection and death uh, but this debate uh, 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 was not was not did uh, sufficiently to and we we had not forced to to change uh, uh, social policy for that and the poor people was without protection about about it uh, uh, I think that that is is uh, one point o other other topic uh, was about the the demands of black movement in Brazil that's interesting because black movement in Brazil are so 
uh, complex and there are different line of interpretation, different theoretical influence uh, 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 among, among, among black movement and, and we can we can talk in, in, uh, uh, about black movement in plural because there are different black movement in Brazil and uh, black movement can be understood in the context of uh, uh, general social movements in Brazil because uh, black movement is part of uh, 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 a major uh, uh, conjuncture. But when we, we see some, uh, some topics presented by black movement, we can see that there are two big, big uh, topics, I think. One topic is the defense for universal demands. For example, the protection of uh, universal system of health, the protection of university and, and uh, public uh, uh, education system, uh, or uh, combating uh, uh, poverty. There are some demands uh, 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 presented by black movements that are democratic demands, uh, Abdias Nascimento, uh, impor an, an important thinker, Afro-Brazilian thinker, calls about quilombismo. Quilombismo is like Maronism or, or uh, it's like an important movement of, of uh, important black movement in Brazil in the time, in the period of, in, in the slavery period. Uh, and uh, Abdias, calls about necessity to think the, the social projects in terms of quilombism, in terms of uh, social justice, but that social justice uh, is, is not only uh, uh, the, the, the uh, mod modern approach of, of justice, but is, is also incorporation of uh, African uh, and indigenous way of life and uh, and uh, African and indigenous knowledge uh, in that in that social project of justice and uh, but uh, Abdias Nascimento was the intellectual uh, important in the time uh, in the moment of our constitution but he, uh, he uh, was not uh, read by important thinkers from left, for example, and his project, his Quilombist project uh, was not incorporated by important, th important thinker and scholar that are, are th thinking capitalism in Brazil. Uh, but one, one topic of mov black movement is the universal demand demands but the, there is also the, the, the ask for uh, affirmative actions that uh, uh, recognize uh, the African uh, knowledge and culture, uh, that recognize uh, Afro-Brazilian experience. Uh, that's two, two topics, but uh, there are different forms of, of, of think these, these two, the, those two topics in in uh, black movement agenda. And I think that that, that is an uh, important part of black movement today that created a kind of resentment with left because left, uh, the thinkers left, or left thinker, I don't know, uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, think about racism in his, in their agenda, and that create a kind of resentment. And that's so problematic because created the, the, the false idea that it's possible to respond uh, black problem or, uh, or respond racism uh, uh, without think Brazilian capitalism and economic issues. I, I think it, it, it's it's so problematic approach, but uh, that is. Uh, uh, such a approach uh, in, in Brazil. Uh, it, it, that's important to think the limits of identity, identity policies because that is, uh, uh, I, I, for me, 
uh, I, I am, uh, uh, I, I study, study Franz Fanon, Kwan Kruma, and Patsy Lumumba, and Ho Chi Minh. Uh, and and uh, when I, I, I read these, these intellectuals, I think that there are, that there is a difference uh, in the identity policy processed by Bandung spirituals, for example, and uh, uh, the identity, identity policies uh, 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 processed by, for example, uh, post-colonial uh, British thinker, for example, that uh, I think uh, uh, there are different response to racism and uh, the black movement today uh, uh, are in, 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 uh, is in center of, of dispute uh, between different, uh, different perspective, intellect, uh, uh, theoric and political perspective. And I think that uh, uh, Bandung Spirituals uh, is the possibility to defend a subordinate identity without lost uh, the universal perspective. Uh, but I think that, I think that uh, that is others' perspectives in the field today. Uh, and we, we are, uh, th that's topics are in debate today. Uh, uh, but I think, uh, uh, and I, I agree with Franz Fanon that uh, considerate uh, identity uh, uh, is important to think about relationship, theoretical relationship between particular and universal aspect. Uh, and we, we don't need uh, shoes between universal or particular aspect. We, we can think the dialect, dialectical relationship uh, between them. Uh, that is a point. Uh, uh, about co a Brazilian constitution is an interesting topic because our legal uh, advance were against the, the neoliberal wave of the late uh, 20th century. It was because we, we, we was uh, uh, in a social pressure. We, we, we had a major strike in, in pre previous ways, for example, th there was an important um, uh, uh, rise of movement in, 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 in the period of, uh, of our constitution. But uh, the, the, the following government af after that moment was marked by a, a, a kind of readjusting the state to neoliberalism. And, and the structural cries of capital uh, necessity. And that creates a, a, a kind of, of, of contradiction because we had a, a beautiful constitution. Our constitution uh, calls for important uh, demands of social movements uh, from the land, from the urban uh, uh, place, uh, important, important uh, achievement uh, constitutional achievement, but the social condition creates difficult to a state provide that uh, what is there. But we can we can think also uh, about the, the limits of the state to to provide uh, social justice uh, in the capitalist uh, in the capitalist system, but. Uh, 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 the constitution was, was not a socialist constitution, but created the idea, the, the, the possibility of a kind of welfare state. But that welfare state present in constitution uh, uh, is only present in constitution because we, we didn't uh, be able to practice that, that uh, uh, achievement. And, and that creates difficult, real difficult, uh, but uh, is interesting because today uh, Bolsonaro government says that the first task for them is uh, break constitution. Uh, we, we, we could not uh, practice uh, constitution, but constitution continue being an important 
achievement, uh, uh, important social achievement that we need defend it uh, because there are uh, important de social uh, demands. But uh, uh, Lula is is a complex analysis. Is complex anal analyze Lula government uh, because Lula was, uh, for me, Lula was an achievement. Lula was achievement of the working class in Brazil. Lula was important part of, of, of uh, mobile, mobilization and reception uh, or governmental reception of social demands. Uh, and Lula was possible due to Brazil position in the international commodity, commodity market in, 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 in 2008 crisis, for example, that that's create the possibility uh, uh, to Brazil stay in the in the particular particular place when uh, different scouting was at crisis, uh, and, and and that that process uh, create the possibility to uh, incorporate poor people in in market uh, and. Uh, and incorporate in government incorporate uh, a, a, a kind of popular project, but uh, my point is that that moment was marked by a, a pact, a kind of pact between a dominant class and working class, and that pact create the impossibility to to rising to to advance with this this that's changing and uh, the, the result was a, a, a fragile achievement. Uh, and uh, when we, we, had, we had a popular project, we, we, have, we had uh, an important achievement, but it was not deeply uh, 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 rised to change the real situation, but even uh, uh, create uh, important achievement. But when that project was not important more for a dominant class, for example, that, that project was discarded uh, and working class was, had, had not forced to defend it, its, its project. Uh, and I think Lula government was complex because we had in one hand the incorporation of, of demanding, of social demanding, of work demanding, but on the other hand we had a kind of institutionalization of social movement uh, and, and belief in the institutional way as a unical way to guarantee the achievement. But when that project was discarded by dominant class in Brazil, the, the, social, class, the, the social workers and social movement was so weak uh, and fragile, fragile uh, and because it was uh, uh, almost totally institutionalized, institutionalized, uh, institutionalized uh, and that creates problem to resist uh, uh, of changing of uh, political uh, scenario, uh, and, and that's interesting because uh, that creates a, a, a great debate uh, in Brazil about the possibility to do a kind of, of uh, self-critique uh, of left, uh, where we we was wrong. Uh, how can can we do different now? Because uh, we 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 had a, a loss. We we. Uh, and, and that debate is part of, of current scenario. And Marxism is, is part of this debate because we, we had a, a non-Marxist way of democracy, democratic project of social justice by Lula government, for example. And uh, some intellectuals cause about that limit of laws of a radical perspective in that project. Uh, but uh, for on the other hand, thinking Marxism today uh, 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 is important to, to think the limits of Brazilians Marxist, historical Marxist uh, to uh, 
thinking important problems in Brazil, like gender, uh, race, and uh, environment, etc. That the debate is present in, in, in left today and is an important debate. And I think it's a contemporary debate because uh, we can put in the in the scenario uh, uh, the possibility to to uh, to to think in hope uh, 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 because uh, the the posture of left was not think in the hope but think today uh, think and organize the 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 rule the, the organize the, the society like uh, us uh, it, it, it is organized today, but I, I think the, the possibility of criticize Marxism or, or put Marxism in debate is the possibility to, uh, to dream with other societies. I think uh, uh, the, the hope, the rays of hope uh, is, is here also to, to dream in another form of society, but that, that needs to be building in this society and we need to face this problem, the real problem, the, the contemporary extent problem. They are marked by a combination of race, class, gender, homophobia, uh, and etc. And for, for last, I, I want to talk about fascism because that is so uh, complex issue also, because I agree uh, with the thinker that calls about raising of new faces in Brazil, because if we see in, in the political aspect, we, we have all the topics of, of faces. But I think uh, uh, we need to contextualize, contextualize the debate about it, because historically, if you, we think Italian fascism or German fascism. Uh, uh, fascism was a political response by monopoly, uh, uh, monopoly capital from backward country to compete with a central country. But when we, we see, and, and I, I am reading Fanon here in Wretched, What the Earth, when we see uh, colonial bourgeoisie uh, or colonial bourgeoisie uh, you not like the the uh, Prussian bourgeoisie, uh, a kind of bourgeoisie like it wants to be in, 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 in the high. Our bourgeoisie was created by colonialism. Was created to be a a, a, a part of ne of uh, imperialist process and never wanted to compete or guarantee an autonomous path. I think. It, to talk about only fascism without considering that particularity, that colonial particularity uh, is, uh, uh, can be, uh, let us, uh, can, can be uh, difficult uh, interpretation of this reality. Uh, and my, my problem, my, my question is how the, 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 our colonial roots uh, uh, help us explain uh, the contemporary problem and, and limits. That's the, the point. And I think to answer it, we need to, to, to read uh, important intellectuals like Lélia Gonzalez and Sueli Carneiro and uh, others, and Fernanda Lopes and Jurema Werneck. And there, there are important thinkers, black women and uh, uh, and black men thinkers thinking Brazil, uh, not only thinking racism or thinking black experience, but thinking response to Brazilian problem and the international crisis in Brazil. But the racism is part of kind of invisibility of of that intellectuals also, and the, in the university, uh, that names are are not knowledge because people don't, don't know uh, Sueli Carneiro or Lélia Gonzalez, but Lélia Gonzalez offers important, uh, uh, important uh, 
intellectual material, important contribution to understand the particularity of Latin America, uh, or uh, uh, Lélia Gonzalez calls about Latino America, or, or America, Latino America, because uh, she, she said that we, we are not Latino, because there are a, 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 a different fights, even in the culture field, where uh, uh, other cultures resist and create different way of life uh, that uh, uh, stay, stay, stay here in, in America. But we, we think America only in uh, Eurocentric way and disconsiderate uh, the importance of that experience, that way of life, but that pr theoric production of black and indigenous people. That is an important challenge uh, for, for progressive force, uh, Marxist or non-Marxist, but the important task for progressive force is incorporate uh, uh, indigenous and African knowledge, but uh, they, they usually, they don't did it. And our better uh, thinker uh, are, still, are still white people in America, in Bolivia, in uh, Uruguay, in uh, uh, Nicaragua. But that, uh, that, that are uh, indigenous and African societies also. Uh, uh, that is a task. I, I think the, uh, it's important to read Rui Mauro Marini when he said about over-exploitation of workforce, but it's important to read uh, also Mariategui when he, he, he calls the importance to consider it the indigenous question in the left, uh, in the left task, in the left struggle. And in Brazil, we, we have Lélia Gonzalez, we have Clovis Moura, we have uh, uh, important thinkers talking about this. Uh, I, I think he, our task is, uh, is fixing that face opposition between ra race and class because racism is part of, of our particular way of structuration of capitalism. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we, we have exactly three minutes left, so unfortunately we'll not be able to take on um, any more questions. But I really uh, wanted to, 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 to thank you, Davison, for what has been an illuminating two, two hours. And you shocked us. You spoke about the over 166,000 deaths in Brazil, most of them of black people. And you, you talked about the fact that this was possible in spite of one of the most progressive universal healthcare systems uh, in the world. You also shocked us by drawing attention to the fact that no serious outrage has been expressed in Brazil and elsewhere about this uh, shocking statistic of black deaths. And this is in the context of worldwide protests like Black Lives Matter movements and, and, and so on. And, and also the recent anti-SARS protests in Africa's most populous uh, nation, uh, Nigeria. In, in that way, you've, you, you really um, made us to understand that epidemiological problems cannot be understood without an understa a deep understanding of the capitalist systems around the world. And in this case, this the particular variant in, in, in Brazil, which is steeped in colonialism and, 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 and racism. And, and th this, is, this, this, this has been uh, really important. You also allowed us to talk about race of hope in this situation, the very health system um, uh, that, that you mentioned, new formations to address the, the crisis, uh, particularly formations of, of, of black movements, but also you allowed us to talk about the possibility of broad broader social movements and, and struggles led, led by the, 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 the oppressed. We also managed to talk about the importance of constitutions 
uh, progressive constitutions, but at the same time, there are limitations in neoliberal capitalist systems and therefore how to work um, I, 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 around them. I think um, Brazil's predicament raises a very important question for all of us, and it is this, how working people and progressive social movements around the world can protect hard-won socioeconomic and political gains from the inevitability of the counter-revolution and prevail. I think this is a subject of many more seminars that we should, we, we, we should hold, definitely, because I think this is a question that concerns all of us around um, the, 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 the globe. I also want to thank Paris for very important insights, for helping us to deepen our understanding of the complexities of, of Brazil. Thank you very much, participants, for your insights, questions, and, 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 and so on. And thanks to the supporting partners, especially to our tricontinental logistics team, particularly Joseph Mathai, Freedom Mazui, Nabajet Malaka, Esha Chowdhury, Priyanka Kula, and Julio Kambanku. I want to announce to you that the next session in our dialogue series will be on December 2nd with Dr. Max Ajil, who will talk to us on the subject of a people's Green New Deal obstacles and, 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 and prospects. And I hope all of you will join us, but also spread the word so that we can have a larger uh, gathering. With these few words, I'd now like to declare this webinar ended. And thank you so much for participating and have a good day, wherever you may be. Thank you, Davison. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.